This movie is a short introduction to the General Electric Model 7F DL diesel engine. Its purpose is to acquaint the viewer with a four-cycle power plant source used in railroad locomotives, in off-highway vehicles, and in ships as the prime mover. The engine is built in three configurations, the V8, the V12, and the V16. It features many engineering advances that make it more reliable, efficient, and easier to maintain than other power plants. This cutaway model includes two cylinders and pistons, plus many other components shown exactly as they operate. The main frame or block of the engine is a one-piece casting, as opposed to being fabricated. This provides greater structural rigidity and reduced maintenance. Cylinders, including head, liner, and jacket, are a unit assembly. This feature permits each unit to be built up and bench tested before being installed in the engine. The integrity of each cylinder is thus assured when bolted into position. The main bearing cap is held in by vertical studs, secured at the lower end by hex nuts. Cross bolts are used to secure the main bearing caps laterally instead of the usual serrations found on other makes of diesel engines. The connecting rod arrangement uses an articulated joint between the right bank and left bank rods. This arrangement makes available the full crankshaft bearing area to absorb the power stroke force. The master rod is in the left bank while the articulated rod is in the right bank of the engine. Clearance between the articulated rod and the lower, outer, lower liner skirt is about one-eighth of an inch, while clearance between the master rod and the inside lower liner skirt is about one-quarter of an inch. The camshafts drive the crosshead which operate the intake and exhaust valves through push rods. The middle one of the three cams associated with each cylinder drives the push rod for the fuel pump, which injects fuel under high pressure into the cylinder. The exhaust valves are operated through a bell crank and a second short push rod. During the last part of the exhaust stroke, both exhaust and intake valves are open. This provides excellent engine breathing, as spent exhaust gases are expelled with the help of incoming fresh air under pressure. Fuel is pumped through a low-pressure header, compressed by a high-pressure injection pump, and delivered to the cylinder through the injection nozzle. Excess fuel used to lubricate the nozzle's moving parts is merged with additional excess fuel from the fuel pump and flows through other drilled passages in the cylinder jacket and into external piping leading back to the fuel tank. Cooling water flows into the cylinder jacket downward through grooved passages completely surrounding the liner, then up through other grooved passages to the cylinder head to cool it. It then flows through the outlet water jumper into the main discharge water header, where it goes back to the water storage tank or to the radiators. Combustion air, after being compressed by the turbocharger, enters the cylinder from the intake manifold through the open inlet valves. As the piston comes up, the air is compressed, fuel is injected, combustion takes place, and the piston goes down on its power stroke. As the piston rises the second time, the exhaust valves open and the spent gases go out into the single pipe exhaust manifold to drive the turbocharger. 
Lube oil is pumped to the main lube oil header, flows down through a pipe, which is cut away in this model, to each main bearing. Oil is also discharged in a steady stream through a tube into the mesh of the timing gears to lubricate them. At each of the main bearings, oil flows through an annular groove into a cross-drilled hole in the crankshaft. Then through an angle drilled hole to lubricate each connecting rod journal. It continues through drilled holes in each of the two connecting rods, a single hole in the master rod and two holes in the articulated rod, and then goes into the piston crown for cooling. Here the oil is shaken as though in a cocktail shaker to achieve good heat transfer. The now heated oil drains back into the crankcase as does the oil collected by the oil scraper ring on the cylinder. The camshafts also are drilled longitudinally and carry oil to each camshaft bearing for lubrication. Then through angle drilled holes into the crossheads, up through the intake and exhaust push rods, and through the rockers to lubricate the valves and other moving parts in the upper cylinder chamber. Many thousands of the GE 7FDL diesel engine are now in service around the world. They have proven themselves to be ruggedly built, simple and easy to maintain, and a dependable prime mover. In heavy duty service, the General Electric diesel engine has excellent fuel economy providing as much as a 10% reduction in fuel costs.